Welcome back to Pretentious Plays. I am Jade. Or you're Jade. No, I'm Jade. You're just, there can only know. there can only be one. Doesn't even know. I am the Scrivener. This is my my buddy Jay Durham. We think. And this is the uh, Pretentious Plays, the uh, the high horse, the Let's Play series that uh, talks at you from a pedestal, from a high horse. We talk at you, not with you. Yes, your opinions don't matter because ours are better. Yeah. And here we have Space Channel Five Special Edition. This is a special edition. Now this is a rhythm game, and one of the interesting things about this format is. Um, a rhythm game would be all but impossible, due in no small part to the concentration that it takes to actually play a rhythm game. Right. So, it's difficult to talk, comment, and all that stuff uh, while also concentrating on a rhythm game. Right. Fortunately, this game has a cheat code that you enter and it plays the entire game for you. That's right. So, although this is my selection, technically nobody will actually be playing it. Yeah. The game plays itself. Right. It's quite masturbatory. Speaking of, this is quite masturbatory. <laughs> I'm sorry you feel that way. <laughs> so, uh, Space Channel 5 is, um, I don't put it up, it doesn't have enough emotional impact to be up on the same sorts of pedestals that I put, like, really, really great games, mm -hmm. but I will say I like this game more than most. I think, uh, it's my favorite of this genre. Okay. Guitar Hero can piss right off. I don't know, I like it's very good. Parappa, I mean, Parappa the Rapper has fond, we all have fond memories yeah. of that. But um, one thing I, de I definitely have never thought of uh, with video games is, like, style. And I think this is the most stylish video game I've ever seen. Yeah. This Dreamcast is was very, like, stylish. Yeah. They had, like, Jet Set Radio, and they had this. They were all about, like, aesthetic choices. It's true. Um, at least more so than, like, early PS2 was. Agreed. Um, and this is a port. Uh, yeah. with it, we're, this is uh, being done on the PlayStation 2 version. However, it is most definitely originally a Dreamcast game. And I could be wrong. I think there was actually some distance between the two. I think there was. Yeah, there was yeah. a few years after. I remember the PS2 having a different cover art. So just like, I think, just varying things like that. Yeah. So, so this is uh, the PS2 version. Not to be confused with the much superior Dreamcast version. See, look at it. It's got the... The holographic the cover. Lenticular cover. Lenticular. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can catch that at That's all. Right right. But, uh, ooh, look, and she's doing like this leg she's up. She's doing thing. like a Rockettes kick. Yeah. yeah. It is the holiday season. I saw the Rockettes a few years ago. Did you? Yeah. Huh. How about that? It's one of those bucket list things, I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, so, you're in New York on Christmas. What else are you doing? Yeah. I went to the Apple store when I went to New York for Christmas. The Apple store? Yeah. No. It, wasn't, it wasn't that great way of spending Christmas Eve, but. I went to the Nintendo store. See, I didn't go to that. I haven't been there ever. I took a picture with, uh, like, Mario's go-kart and shit. I actually didn't know where it was, otherwise I would have gone this last time. I did go to Midtown Comics, though. That was rad. That was, that was so cool. It's yeah. like a three-floor comic shop. You nerd. That was great. What a nerd. It was great. All right, here we go. We're beginning Ooh La La's Swing and Report Show. Mm -hmm. So, I like that there are text inconsistencies yeah. in this game. This game has so much awkward to it, but all it does is make the game all the more charming. Like, it's not, like, design awkward, it's just, like, presentation awkward. Right. But the game is aiming to be sort of this, like, has this, like, cool cat funky aesthetic to it, which gives, just makes it work even better, I think. Mm. So essentially the gameplay is, uh, this is Ooh La La, she's a space reporter. This is 2400 and something. And, uh, aliens have invaded, and they're, as, as Ooh La La is reporting here, is forcing people to dance. Yeah. So, uh, your goal in the game is to follow rhythms to liberate people from the, uh, space aliens. And, like, the news flash and, like, copy alien moves, they're, like, this, the, they kept the awkward, like, Dreamcast, uh, whatever the little mini memory card was. That was the VMU. Yeah, the yeah. VMU. Like, they, keep the, they kept the same, like, overlays that corresponded with how the VMU, even nice. though this is a different console and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, Ooh La La has to match, uh, it's, it's basically like a call and answer. Simon Says sort of thing. Yeah, see, I played this game on the Dreamcast when it came out. I rented it. And I was very, very bad. For some reason, when I was a kid... Well, I wasn't like a kid at this point. I was getting up. Well, I wasn't getting up. You were 40. I was still a kid. Yeah, I was, I was 40 years old. Um, I, I couldn't figure it out. Like, sure. I guess I was just stupid. It's right? possible. Like, I didn't know much about rhythm games. I was just so bad at it that I didn't get into it. Now, one thing I will say about that, and it's tragic, I actually haven't played this. This game used to be, like, what I went to. Like, if I, I'd finish Red Dead Redemption. Right. I'd finish a game with, like, a lot of gravity to it, mm. and I'd want to sort of just... With really great games and really, like, exhausting emotional experiences, you typically just can't jump into something else. It kind of lingers with you for a while. 
This game was always great about, like, sort of resetting yourself. Like, I like to play this game after I'd finished, like, a game where I, where I, if I sort of didn't know how to move on, or I was so, like, invested and just tired emotionally from a, from a really good, like, heavy game, I would play this game as sort of a palate cleanser to go back to sort of just, like, simple, fun, silly type games. This game is also a pain in the ass to, uh, hopefully the sound mix turns out okay, because I wanted to make sure that the game audio was a little bit more uh, audible than is typical with uh, pretentious plays, because the songs in this game are, it is, after all, a rhythm game, are so important. Even, like, just, like, the art direction on, like, the, the captives and stuff, like, the little random, I guess, I guess you can call them NPCs, <laughs> although they're not, like... Did you have a Dreamcast? I did. A, I still have a Dreamcast. Yeah. yeah. I loved it. I oh yeah. The system is criminally underrated. I think. I agree. I think we're finally at the point too. It's a, we've somehow gotten to the point on the Dreamcast where so many people love it yeah. openly now that it's technically not underrated. But we all agreed that because of its life cycle, it wound up underrated. Well, yeah, like the, the Saturn gave Sega console such a bad name anyway. Yeah. And like, you know. People say, like, oh, the Dreamcast was terrible, and the PlayStation 2 killed it, and all that. That's not really what happened. It killed it, like, from a business standpoint. Yeah. But it's just because, you know, Dreamcast came first. It was just, a, it was just bad timing on Sega's part. Yeah. Um, I mean, for a while there, I played my Dreamcast way more than the PS2. They um, didn't mark it well, either. They did. Uh, oh, the dogs are at it, man. Break it up. Uh -huh. Go away. <laughs> the, do the, dogs. the dogs. You guys know the dogs. Yeah. Um, Pretentious play is nothing if not, so... The games are there, but it's mostly about the dogs screwing up the sound. Yeah. Yeah, Dreamcast definitely had really good like, uh, arcade ports. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Had Shinmu, whatever that's worth. <laughs> yeah. Shinmu. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Walking into houses simulator. The thing that I think is most tragic about Shinmu is the, uh, when you, like, it was supposed to be like, Milton, for fuck's sake, get him out of here. I don't know. Get him out of here. I think he's rabid. I think so, too. It's that squeak toy. God, my wife hates that squeak toy. The Shimmy was supposed to be the game that, like, sold the Dreamcast. Oh, yeah. And it's like, FF7 was the game that sold the PS1. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, if you compare those two titles, it's a pretty lopsided affair. Yeah. And I agree. Like, I was, I followed its development. Like, through like, EGM and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was really excited for it, and when I finally got it, I remember just kind of being like, is this it? Like, yeah. Shimmy, yeah. It was way too ambitious, I think. Like, because you have games like the Yakuza games now that are basically that work off the same template. Yeah, and, and that actually work and do something. Yeah, but, like Shinmu just didn't have enough substance for everything that it did. It was very fuck around. Yeah, like you could go in every house or whatever, and that was novel. But like, you couldn't. There wasn't anything to do in any of the houses, so it was yeah. just kind of like you just walked around. That's pretty much yeah. Man. That's pretty much the, the the like the game in a in sort of a nutshell was yeah. it was all. Ambition with no purpose for it. And the pacing was god awful. Horrific. Yu Suzuki was planning on making like a 10 chapter series or something. So the first one has like nothing. The second game that ended up coming out on the Xbox it got shat out. It was like three chapters combined. Keep, then... keep berating Shinmu while I get rid of the dogs. Yeah, and then, and then nothing else is even coming then. So it's just kind of like this weird holding pattern of a story where nothing ended up becoming all right. It was just this overly ambitious project that nobody ever played. It was just. Maybe ahead of its time, maybe not a good idea to begin with. It's hard to, it's hard to say. But. Um, I think this is a good idea. Is this right here? Shooting aliens with a power of dance. See, now if the Dreamcast had just been shooting aliens and dancing. Right. I feel like it, it would still be around. We would, we, we, we would. Xbox would never have happened. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the thing I miss most, and I think that's. Uh, if somebody gave me a game to, like, exemplify the Dreamcast from a business standpoint, it would be Shenmue. Yeah, absolutely. If somebody gave me a game to uh, exemplify it for, like, what it probably should have been, it would be this game. Yeah. Like, look at the, like, I miss the charm of, like, that late 90s, early noughts Sega game. Yeah. I miss the experiment to, like, Sega had zero self-consciousness about doing things with their games that other people weren't doing. Yeah. Um... Not, well, not necessarily directly affiliated with the Sega. Uh, like, Crazy Taxi is yeah. another Dreamcast title I liked, which was, I think, it was an arcade board, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. But it, it still had this, like, the Dreamcast just had this vibe of 
doing fun things for the sake of being fun yeah. and just being colorful and being quirky. Like House of the Dead 2 was a launch title. Like yeah. Like arcade perfect version of that. Yeah. That was pretty novel back at the time. Like the Typing of the Dead. I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> typing of the Dead is still hailed as like yeah. a pretty sweet game. Pretty like good. it's still entertaining. Seaman. Seaman. No, that one might be going either way on. That's a little weird, yeah. <laughs> I still don't understand that. That's one. the, uh, that's like the extension of, of the, the unique go for it idea, but taken too far without any sort of self criticism. Yeah. I, interesting, like, I think, uh, visually, I think, like, the number of people you saved, like, I still think, like, if you don't save certain people that, you know, if you miss on certain inputs or whatever, you, uh, some of your followers here get days. Now this is Pudding. Okay. Pudding is uh, from Channel 42, which is not nearly as cool as Space Channel 5. Not, no. yeah, because we're ooh la homers. Yeah. Are they both available uh, over the air? Or are they satellite channel? I don't know. I, I feel like the, they're on Dish. Okay, yeah. yeah they held out yeah. the 2400s. <laughs> dish, dish lives on. This interface is simple too, I like that. Yeah. More than anything, I just like the style enough. The style is almost enough to make this game work what it is. Like, it just, like, it's working with pretty primitive textures. Yeah. Like, and it just manages to make it, like, the character design of Ooh La if you sort of break it down piece by piece, by piece is, like, sort of offensively polygonal. Yeah. But if you put it all together, you actually get, like, this very, like, I just, I think it's very difficult to make a rhythm game from this time like, the movements these characters have is, like, works so well, and it flows so well, and that's really hard to do, like, with a game of this era. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's look at those lighting effects on Pudding, like, that shine, yeah. it's so stupid looking by itself, but it's like, the way they move yeah. works. It is funny, though, like, whenever it's time for Ooh La to dance, it's clear, like, the inputs, like, it's the same thing with Parappa and Um Jammer Landing, it's like, they make the movements were, like, jerky and weird. Yeah. Um, just because of the way the inputs work out and like timing and stuff. Yeah. I thought that was playing with older games. Now, take it to the um, I feel like Sega, if uh, if Ula La could have stuck around, if uh, if this uh, the Dreamcast had been more of a a success, we by now we would have sort of uh, Ula La DDR clones where oh, yeah. you would have not only the because I mean like this is before like the 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 era of infinite peripherals and motion control. Oh, yeah. So like by now we would have games where like. You played the one person played the song on guitar. You'd have to like dance and enter. You know, it'd be like an ooh la la rock band situation. I mean, she was. I mean, she was all over the magazines at the time. Mm -hmm. She was like the next Lara Croft. She was like the, the game girl type deal. I think she's so much cooler than Lara Croft. Yeah. Like, uh, if I was in a uh, like even modern Lara Croft, as great as Tomb Raider, the recent Tomb Raider was. If I'm walking down the street. And I'm, uh, this is, uh, Coco Tapioca, the hypnotized robot invader. Gotcha. What's threatening? Early, early Sega, man. Yeah. Don't give a shit. Nope. Um, this is the, this is what we, what passes for boss fights on uh, Space yeah. Channel 5. Just more complicated inputs and off rhythms and things. It's a good time. And see so your view rating in the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, that's it. Who's, who's watching Ooh La La? Because this is all about ratings. Let's right. call it what yeah, it is. Yeah. But uh, if I was walking down the street with modern Lara Croft and, uh, you know, Ooh La La and her, her gang of, of, of dancing guitar soloists in their postmodern space uniforms came dancing by, I would uh, I would toss Lara Croft to the curb, daddy-o. Yeah. If she'd punch you. <laughs> yeah. She'd take her pickaxe or whatever. Yeah. Bury it in my noodle. Yeah. She'd have to do a QTE first, though. <laughs> Hey! hey. <laughs> yeah, first she would have to have a everybody have a misguided anti-rape campaign yeah. off of something that literally never took place in the oh, game. Yeah. See, <laughs> about that for a second. Yeah, I'm all for their rise. And I, uh, hold on, let me rephrase that. I'm all for what they were campaigning against. Agreed. So I read all these campaigns. I was like, wow, that sounds kind of fucked up. But yeah. I still want to play the game. Yeah, so I play the game. And I get to the end, and I'm like, wait, where was that scene? I it didn't up, exist. I looked up to see if it got removed. Nope. No, it was never there. Never there. And Utter sensationalism. Yeah. I think Ula La reported on the story I first. think so, She was too, on yeah. the scene. She was, she was the breaking news. We need some more news. Look at this shit. <laughs> She's the peer on that every day. So you have to zap out the little minions. Oh, yeah. The little alien cyclops tokens here. I think this is also part of the fun of Japanese game development, too, is like, especially when it's sort of off rails and they're sort of creating freely, yeah. it creates a situation where, um, 
you get to see American culture through a completely different lens. Yeah. Like, there's a Michael Jackson knockoff character that, yeah, in this. I uh, Back when old Wacko Jacko was... Uh, Wacko Jacko. Yeah, he's a common thread on here, and now he's actually gonna show up, kind of. Yeah. Um, we were building towards this. Yeah, Wacko Jacko. Um, most of the time when we do these pretentious plays, I'm just sort of, like, it's, it's, we just sort of do it for the jollies yeah. of, like, each other's company and running our traps. So I gotta tell you, I really like this game. Yeah. <laughs> this is a game seems I just good. enjoy watching. Seems good. And, it, and with the cheat code, it's just, it's so effortless. Yeah, exactly. It's like a day at the golf course. Yeah, you just exactly. like, oh. Um, Put the wife and kids to bed and go yeah, out on the town for some Space Channel fun. I guess this is an outdoor pot. Jacko was an alien. I'm still unconvinced. Yeah, I'm just not convinced he's dead, so... Speaking of aliens, and Michael Jackson, was he one of the original Men in Black film uh, aliens on the screen? Where they were like, we're pretty sure these people are all aliens. I like, think so. I think so. Now, here's the amazing thing about... Look at rescue rating, 100%, take that. Nice. Men in Black, the funny thing about Men in Black is it has... it's It has one joke. People, like, people are aliens. Mm -hmm. And it rides that fucking horse until it collapses. Yeah, it does. That's the entire focus. It, it's one joke, yeah. and it just stretches it as far as it'll go. And well, with the added like Will Smith reacts to things <laughs> joke, which let's be honest, you can milk until yeah. end of time. Sure. Like something weird happens. Will Smith goes, "Ah, oh, hell no!" Nah, all that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm gonna break this damn thing. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> he's just so normal. Yeah. In this not so normal world. Yeah. The Smiths are kind of like a like embarrassing self perpetuating thing now. Yeah, that's true. Where it's like, it's essentially like Jaden Smith, like, it, it's kind of getting sad. Yeah. It's like, officially to the point of being depressing. Oh, Have this... you ever seen his Twitter? No. It is absolutely inane. <laughs> first of all, there's like YouTube memes and stuff about it. Like, first of all, he he capitalizes every word, which just drives me nuts. And now like, not caps, like, like the first letter of every word he yeah. capitalizes. So that's even worse. And it's like selective. He's obviously stupid. never gone to school in his life. Like, he's been homeschooled by like, probably the primest people ever. Right. He has these tweets, like, one of them was like, why do we know the sky is blue? How do we know it's not green? Stuff like that. Yeah. And, like, trying to be like, deep. Yeah, but he's not like, actually yeah, saying yeah. yeah. And, that's a like, dangerous thing with uh, celebrity kids, because... I don't know if you know this or not, but kids are morons. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I was a pretty smart kid, and I think up until a point where I was at least, like, 23 or so, I was completely stupid. Yeah. And you can make an argument that I still am. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. Somewhere between, like, 23 and 27, I feel like I turned some kind of corner. Yeah. If I had Twitter at age 10, Dude, and I was, like, Will Smith's kid, yeah. like... Smack the phone out of my hand before I hurt myself. Every time I see little kids on Facebook or something, I'm just like, A, what are you posting about? And B, like, You don't why? know anything. Yeah, like, you don't know Get anything. Get the hell out. Like, I like the space chair she's done. That was pretty sick. Yeah. I might get a little bit of vertigo if I sat in that chair for too long now. Well, this is the future. We've probably adapted. That's true, yeah. Not Obama's future. <laughs> Not with those NASA cuts. <laughs> Be on the ground for a long time. Yeah. Oh, bummer, am I right? No, bummer. I, I post your thoughts about Oh, bummer. I don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> As the views skyrocket. Yeah. So, this is the second level here. Oh, that was all one level. Yeah. Oh. It's a spaceship ASO SOS. I think this is where we meet uh, Wacko Jacko. Oh. I don't know what they call him on here. Jack Michelson, maybe? Something. Something. Something like that. Just coy enough to work. Yeah. Do you remember that episode of The Simpsons where Michael Jackson did the voice? But it, like, it actually wasn't Michael Jackson, but they said it was. Where Homer goes to the middle institution. It's the, is it the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This big fat guy. And, like, it's Lisa's birthday. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was, that was a really like big episode when I was literally six years old. That's yeah. how long the fucking Simpsons is. Oh, yeah. Um, it was a weird episode. It was like some imitator, but they marketed it like it was Michael Jackson. It was just like, I don't know. Yeah, he was like this really fat, bald guy. Yeah. Yeah. But he was like really friendly. It's like, hi, Michael Jackson. Yeah, you know what I discovered on the internet? Like, especially recently? Pornography? Yeah, it's, it's the damnest thing. <laughs> um, like, I think The Simpsons has a really good following in Europe. Like, way more than it does over here. Like, I'll watch videos and stuff from like, European, like, you know, bloggers or whatever. They always reference the Simpsons jokes as if we would reference, like, a Monty Python. Joke. Okay, I got you. And so I think it's, like, got this weird cultural appeal over there that it doesn't have to Americans because we're just so, we're so inundated with it all. Yeah. That... I don't know. I mean, early Simpsons is great, though. Like, I love it. I like mid-range, or I guess it used to be yeah, not, mid-range. Not early, early Simpsons, but like... I like season, like, four to eight-ish. Yeah. Like, yeah. I haven't watched it in about 15 years, I'll be honest. Sorry, you haven't missed much. You've missed a bunch of, like, flashback episodes that keep rewriting the canon. That's so, fine. Like, 
think at first it was like Homer and Marty met at Woodstock and they met in the 70s and then they, oh, okay, was, yeah. they won a couple of years ago where they met in the 90s and it's just like, well, goddamn, like, make up your mind. Yeah. Like, I get that the whole thing is like the kids don't age or whatever, but Milton, don't go keep away. flashback episodes. Milton loves The Simpsons. He does. What are the odds that, I, she, you know, she, she's getting less clothing. She is. Per the level. Oh, that's yeah, gotta be intentional. Yeah. You gotta reward the player with a little... TNA. <laughs> It was nice A little polygonal team. Yeah, it was nice and You took what you could get. When it, like the Stone Ages. Yeah. yeah. I think this is an Atari title. It's a 26 to 28.8k porn. You had to wait all day for the download. Oh, that was the worst. It was brutal. Yeah. Net zero if you were lucky. Net zero. <laughs> what was that? A prodigy? Yeah, a little prodigy. prodigy. Yeah. Not the prodigy. No. They were fire <laughs> Not the fire of the land. Fat of the land. Yeah. But, uh, Great album. It's still pretty good. Oh, yeah. It sounds like a modern album, honestly. It does. Yeah. Those Europeans are ahead on everything. Yeah. We'll get you. You know, between us, like, praising Japan and praising Europe, aside from The Simpsons, right, because yeah. they're they're behind on yeah, that, exactly. obviously. obviously. Alright, we basically just fillet everybody but ourselves. It's true, yeah. yeah. And it's not just because... America's like... You have to grade it on a curve. Like, you have to understand where we're coming from. Right. In the States, for our international viewers, in the States, it's not that we're even that bad a country compared to, I mean, like, yeah, we, we rant and rave about the really shitty aspects of our current country, because we do have a lot. Yeah. We have some issues. Oh, yeah. Some, uh, some even sort of structural misfortunes uh, with our with our systems now. But the only reason we actually take a vocal part of it is because there are so many ignorant people in our country who still think we're the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, exactly. We ha if we don't counteract that, who will? Yeah, exactly. People Nationalist like, douches. Like people who but don't. Sailor guy. They don't acknowledge any flaws. I love this. He wait, look at the sailor wave. Like he's. Yeah. It's this is this. Oh, it's great. Style. style. It's got style. What happened to style? 9/11, man. <laughs> <laughs> this was just pre 9/11. Yeah, style died with 9/11. It's sort of irony. <laughs> um, I miss irony. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I want to be irony man. You should. Like Iron Man. But... <laughs> With something else going yeah. on. <laughs> well, like, your theme song could be the last words that song. That's true. Just... I like that tune. It's a good one. Somebody, that one was very good. somebody in a Twitch chat the other day was talking about uh, sex, ironic, like having sex with somebody, but ironically, mm. and we, the rest of us were just like, I, we see what you're going for, but how do you even do that? And I submitted that, well, the only thing I can think of would be to put on Alanis Morissette's ironic in the background and then get get to business. That's several of <laughs> Because you're listening to a song you wouldn't typically have sex to. I guess. About things that aren't actually that ironic. See, I feel like irony... If you look up irony, right? and I'm sure all of you have, because, God, it's pervasive these yeah, days. It is. At least the word. Look at that! It That's was, great! It was the literally of its time. It was. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm being mystified by Ooh La La's skinny frame funk. Yeah. Look at her. With these Alice in Wonderland table servers behind her. Do you these remember are great. When Gwen Stefani went through her Ooh La La stage? It was around the same she time. Did. Actually, she Ooh did. Ooh La La? Yeah. Around the uh, <gasps> Space Deep. Return of Saturn album. Yeah. Came out a year after. Yeah, she was pink hair. Yeah. I wonder if that was inspired by this. Because that was like, had a very space theme to the album. It she did. She looked the same. This is extraordinary. I can't believe I'm. I never made this connection. Good connection. Yeah. Good connection. Look at you. Yeah, that was a great album. Return of Saturn? Yeah. I guess. I liked it a lot. I mean, it, it was doomed to failure. Yeah. It like, was. it was just because, like, Tragic Kingdom was framed and comes alive, so, like, oh, anything you followed that up was good. I was okay with Return to Saturn. Yeah. What was the, was it the ex-girlfriend the launch yeah, single? Yeah, Wasn't that about that dude from Bush he has been married to for 40 years now? It might have been, yeah. I don't know. Like. I like that they probably started out as a celebrity, like, gossip Hollywood marriage or relationship. But now he just literally needs her to survive. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. They actually came out with an album a couple of years ago, a reunited, like a reunion album. But they did the Smashing Pumpkins thing where they reunited, but it was just him and like a couple other bozos. Oh yeah, yeah. So, the Guns N' Roses, oh, yeah, the yeah, Axl Rose, yeah. and eighteen people they found at the bus station. Yeah. So like, I heard the lead single off of it, and it was the most. That's really funny. That's great. It was. This is actually Gavin Ross down right here. That is like V. Gra Gavin Ross. Yeah, um, it's the most overproduced. Jaguar. That's, nice. that's report, yeah. reporter. Reporter Jaguar. If only. It's like the Wolf Blitzer. Space pirates and jazz, man. God, this is great. 
bush. I want to throw a bush phase. You like bush? I liked them a lot in high school. I don't know why, but... I want to... Speaking of which, if Gwen Stefani could get in touch with me, I'd love to hear some of Gavin Rossdale's sex noises. Oh, yeah. Because we all know what they are. <laughs> where, where Kurt Cobain's were. <laughs> but I really... I'd still like to hear it. Yeah. Because he's got that, like, deep, aggressive... Like, he sings in many places. Like, he just throws in, like, what I call the constipation note. Like, uh, toward the end of Glycerine, the last few Glycerines, like, where he just, like, is really trying to push it out like, there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you more honked. He's a bit more... He's a bit more of a baritone than you. Well, it never occurred to me when I actually liked Bush how much of just a generic ripoff they are. I mean, they struck right when the iron was hot. Like, Kurt Cobain oh, just yeah, died. Yeah. Yeah. 16 Stone comes out, like, three months afterwards, and it's like, oh, boom, all of a sudden you have Nirvana. You have the Nirvana that record labels always wanted. Yeah. Like, the barnacles. Yeah, you have the Nirvana who could pump out three and a half minute long singles that everybody yeah. could listen to. Like, and that the guy was hot enough to where he, I mean, get, they, he got laid enough like, to where he They were, they were perfect for the time. Like, they were a record company's wet dream. They were Nirvana after Nirvana went away with more catchy singles and a hot guy. Like, he kind of got away with a perm. Oh, yeah. Which was, I feel is. Unfortunate. Oh yeah. Yeah. And their lyrics are nonsense. Oh, they're like, garbage. He tried to do the whole like faux Kurt Cobain surrealism thing. Yeah, but, like he's it bad. just didn't work. Like he wasn't doing anything. Ran out of talent. Yeah. Now live. That was a band. Live. <laughs> make it, make it to live. Yeah, no, I, I used to be, but not. No. You know who I like? Ooh la la. Yeah, ooh la la great. <laughs> you can never have a rhythm game based on the bald guy from Live. No. He's got eyebrows. Ed Kowalczyk. Is that? Yeah, that's, that's his name. That's in the 90s, you had bands that made it because they should have, and bands that made it, and you could always tell because of their name. Oh, like, yeah. nobody ever named Kowalczyk should ever have no. been a mainstream musician under a traditional Morse. Look at this fucking thing. This dirty is Dirty Dance, dance Bot Moralina. I'm excited to see if he actually does a dirty dance. It's gonna be Dirty Dancing. They just, like, spliced the entire run of Dirty Dancing. Yeah. My wife loves Dirty Dancing. I, it's alright, I guess. How do you feel about it? Filmed around here. Don't tell people where we are. No, this is scary. It's been, no. We have way too many fans, though. Yeah. Beat down the door. It was kind of fun, maybe, but regardless. How far is it from where we were? Because I don't know. Oh, it was at Lake Lure. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, the majority of it was, at least. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fairy dance fan. Like, I get it. I, I think like, women like it a lot. Yeah, I like it. But why do they like it? Fine. Patrick Swayze. Like, like, crazy Swayze. Like, well, he's dead. Well, yeah, but he wasn't dead then. Well, I still like it. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean... Boom. She won that hypothesis. But, like... Yeah, I guess. I think, um... Because Jennifer Grey hits that, like, just perfect amount of averageness that every girl could be like, oh my god, I see myself in Jennifer. Not that, like, every girl's average, but you know what I mean. I'm going like, to go ahead and go out on a limb here and say it's a good thing my wife never watches these. Right. Because... I'm, I'm gonna frame. I'm gonna frame what I'm about to say in a context that doesn't incriminate me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No self-incrimination. This is America. Good, yeah. Okay, yeah. My wife is the least average woman I've ever been attracted to. Like, traditionally, I, like, if you get, like, I find, like, Scarlett Johansson incredibly attractive. Right. We were born on the same day, by the way. Nice. Same day. Nice. Year, even. That's how I measure my worth. Yeah. <laughs> what, what have I done lately? <laughs> There's something for us stalkers out there. Yeah, look at, look at there. I'm pretty much Scarlett Johansson. Pretty much. Um, I'm attracted to women with, like, uh, who are, like, have a distinct feature, and that usually equates to our culture to like some level of being unattractive or imperfect or right. some some such other nonsense. Like uh, Scarlett Johansson I find attractive, but I still think she possesses just enough like differentness in her look. Like I'm not attracted. Who's like traditionally hot right now? Like who's the thing besides her? Uh, that's not like Who's the ooh la la of our generation? No, that's a good question. Um I need distinct features is the is the point. Emma Stone like Emma Stone. She's, she's got a quirk to her. Like I'm trying to think of She was in Birdman, right? Okay, Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. Like she's pretty yes. standardly attractive. Yes. Like, yeah, like Olivia Wilde, I don't find her unattractive. Right. Me but I would take like the random at body weight barista over right, Olivia yeah. Wilde all day long. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I guess it's just that like I feel like people who are you know, I'm very into story. Like, I'm very into narrative. And I'm the same way with people. I like to, like, I like for people to have a story. And it's like, Olivia Wilde. This is wild. That is wild. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of wild. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I went up to Olivia Wilde and talked, like, aside from, like, you know, how's my boys doing or whatever the hell that show. That was her, wasn't it? That was her, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Falling star. Yeah. I hear it from higher later. Yeah. 
But like, you know, like I feel like traditionally attractive people, maybe it's maybe it's sort of next level prejudice, but it's like I just don't feel like they have anything to tell me. Yeah. I don't feel like I don't know. I like to feel like I'm I don't feel like I'm talking to or engaging with a person if they're just like baseline culturally hot. Yeah. And also maybe that I'm a complete this pretentious contrarian and I just refuse to adhere to it. That's also possible. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think that's <laughs> Yeah, well. I will say, though. Like, I like Ula despite her uh, excessive limminess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the fact she just got tongued by a giant robot. <laughs> um, that was before us. Yeah. Like, I have no right to judge her. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, What's she gonna be wearing? Mark Who's this toddler she's taking behind her? I don't, know, I don't like it. <laughs> say she's a foot. I'm a little She's getting ready for Jacko. <laughs> He didn't do it. <laughs> All right, um, let's do the save screen. But anyway. Yeah, back to Jennifer Grey, though. Yeah. If you've seen her lately, she's unrecognizable. Like, I almost commend her, like, averageness in the 80s, you know what I mean? But, like, she that's, got so much, she that's got, what made She her. got a lot of plastic surgery. See, yeah, that, like, see that's my argument. Oh, shoot. That's yeah. my argument in a nutshell. Yeah. Is Jennifer Grey, like, her look made her attractive to me. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's because yeah. it's honest. It's who you are. Yeah. Whereas, like, now, you know, now she's just, like, this surgery-ridden yeah. falseness. Like, she doesn't look anything like she did. She had a cameo in House Medical Doctor last year. Did she? Or two, I don't know, one year. It yeah. was late in the show. What always cracks me up is, like, whenever you see a Dirty Dancing, like, Ferris Bueller reunion with all the cast members, they all look pretty much the same, except for Sloane. She looks a little rough around the edges. Sloane? So, yeah. I'd yeah, still... I'd still... I mean, I might. Just, I'd have to have, like, a Polaroid I'd, her. And I'd still her have her pull me out of a pool. Yeah, <laughs> I would, too. But, like, then you have Jennifer Grace sitting there, and it's like, who is that? Like, was she an extra? And then you realize, wow, it's actually Ferris' sister. I want to wait until Sloan is, like, 86 years old, and then go up to her and have her do, like, the he's gonna marry me scene. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just this, like, creepy... She's got, like, a throat box or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna marry me. <laughs> it's funny, funny story about a throat box, actually. <laughs> So it's not really funny. This can only go it's, actually kind of, it's actually kind of dark. But Steer us or Lola. So Steer us away from this. I was in Walmart on Black Friday. <laughs> of course. And uh, of course it's Walmart. As all throw box and, stories uh, begin. And like, I was standing around with my friends, and we hear this voice, and it was dogging like this. And I, 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 I was not even joking. I said like, what the hell kind of toy is that? And my friend was like, dude, I don't know. It sounds like it's broken or something. And I was like, where is that coming from? And I turned around, and there was this old man standing like this. And I was like, oh my god. I was like, I feel so bad. But at the same time, like, you know. That's just justice for you being at Walmart. Yeah, maybe. Walmart's a hellhole. Yeah. By exactly. the way, all those people we were talking about from earlier, who, ooh, catch the scoop, who like to, uh, who think America's great, they all shop at Walmart. Yeah, OJ. Okay, yeah, because sure. the best way to uh, show your patriotism for your country is to buy Chinese cheap goods. Walmart. Yeah. God, Walmart's the worst. So Walmart's my, depressing. My Black Friday experience at Walmart. Oh, space, she's spacewalking. God, I love that dance. That's pretty great. That would make me so nauseous. Oh, yeah, that's great. Look at this pre render going on in the background. Yeah, and see, like, they were not, they, this is also just good game design. Because yeah, they were like, we need, this is the point in the game where you have to show them something else. You can't yeah. just give them more costumes. Like, and, like you need very good literally, work. all they programmed was, like, this part, the little ship, and everything else is a pre render cutscene. Like, it's great. It's effortless. Green screen. And that's also thematic because she works for a news station. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure that's intentional. Yeah, probably, I'm positive. Probably. I'm positive. Emma Stone's in Birdman, right? Is she? I think so. Probably even more than Birdman's great. Life, Birdman's great. In 20 years, when you and I are both uh, extremely famous, we'll look back at this and laugh. We'll be like, ha, we saw Birdman that week. That must have been a long time ago. We made Birdman 3 ourselves. <laughs> um. I had a dream one time about Emma Stone, and it was, it was actually a funny story, because it was like the least sexual dream you could ever have about a famous celebrity. It was like really romantic, like we went on a date, and it was like a perfect date, and we like fell in love, but there was no like sexiness involved, so like the antithesis of like a wet dream. Yeah. It was like a romance dream. It was yeah. very odd. Like, it was almost like uncomfortably romantic. And I was like, God, Emma Stone, she's, she's something else. Yeah. I feel like she might be a little boring, a little milk toast. Well, milk toast. Today's pretentious word yeah. is <laughs> milk toast. Milk toast. That's a great word because it, it doesn't sound like it sounds like just a ludicrous word yeah. based on just like its structure and it immediately brings to mind like breakfast foods. Yeah. With both of its uh, syllables, which is a quinky dink. I think we're going. To, this is the tunnel. We go into this like psychedelic tunnel. Whoa. Yeah. Look out. It's like we're flying into the Death Star. See, and like her dance movements reflect her disorientation. Keep a safe distance away from the monitor. Did you see that? Yeah. Is that like an epilepsy warning or something? Oh, I'm sure. They knew what they were getting Japan into. Japan was all... Uh, they were taking risks. It was all light with uh, epilepsy concerns at the time. There's a Pokemon episode. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's killed right. everybody. There was a Simpsons episode that made fun of that. I remember that. That was a while back. Yeah, I do remember that, too. 
I hadn't thought about that in a long time. I remember being really scared about that when I was a kid, because, you know, that episode came out and, like, it killed, like, two people or oh, something. Oh, God, Hypnotized Pudding's back. But, like, of course, the media launched into it as if it was, like, this dangerous... Yeah. It was, like, the never-before-seen Pokemon episode that killed everybody who watched it and all this stuff. It became, like, this, like, Ringu situation. Oh, before yeah. It, it was just, like... As a kid, I was like, oh my god, this isn't that episode, is it? And I had a, actually had a friend, his mom wouldn't let him watch Pokemon anymore, even though he had no history of epilepsy or family history of it. Which is, you can't watch it anymore, you have a seizure. It's like, that's not how seizures work, though. <laughs> I think I finally did. I, did, I thought I was all out of reasons to not have children. I think I find, I think you just gave me another one. Yeah. So I never become an asshole. Because mm -hmm. apparently as soon as you have a kid, you lose all sense of logic whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. You can't watch Pokemon anymore because mm -hmm. of, see, I don't know how seizures work. Exactly, yeah. Some Thanks kid, a lot, Evolution. Because some kid across the ocean with epilepsy had a seizure <laughs> that may or may not have been triggered by this episode. Like... <laughs> Yeah, you gotta figure worldwide the number of kids who just like have an epileptic seizure seizure because they're watching Pokemon. Yeah. Like, what percentage of kids watch Pokemon? Like all of them. Yeah. That's just I will say though, it just happens. Anime at the time, because I was watching a lot of statistics. Becca. I was a big, big weeaboo. Well, we haven't done weeaboo talk yet. Yeah. Let's uh, let's go to Jadrum's weeaboo a lot corner. Of, a lot of anime at the time, like Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon, even like Morley and Monroe. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Go on. Um, just wearing more clothes. There was a lot of like strobing that was unnecessary. Like, I remember scenes of, like Goku, he'd like be doing a flying punch, and he would be like flying, and the screen behind him was just <laughs> strobing, yeah. and it was like completely unnecessary. You know, it was almost like. You know, are you trying to kill people? Are you yeah. punishing them for, you know? You know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. That's right, just yeah. ask Gula La and the producers at Space Channel 5. She got more clothes, though. I just, I noticed yeah. that, too. So, yeah, see, it's just, you know, it's just natural uh, co costume variation, yeah. I think. Got something for every occasion. It wouldn't make sense for her to go out, like, half naked in the, uh, on the spacewalk. No. This is the part of the game I always found most difficult. Like, this is where I usually died. This little part here is quite difficult. I really like this game, I mean, we've kind of hinted at it, like, the seamless transition between cutscenes and, like, this. Yeah. Like, the actual gameplay. Yeah. Um, it just makes it look really good. It makes it look really fluid. Half-Life and, uh, especially Half-Life 2 gets a lot of credit for the sort of never-break camera yeah. thing, which is cool. But at the same time, like, to be perfectly fair, God, that's erotic. Mm. To be perfectly fair, um, I would say that Half-Life 2 still has cutscenes, it's just not in, like, a the traditional, like, break. They do them yeah. very tastefully and briefly and all that stuff. And control's never really taken away from you. Yeah. You can walk around. It's extremely them. brief, You yeah, can, like, jump does. in front of their faces like a bozo. Yeah. yeah, and of course we all do. Um... I, I don't know if you've heard of that one, Half-Life 2. No, it's a good one. It's pretty good. I've heard about it. It's okay. I never did play the episodes, though. I didn't either. I, I started one and then I was like, you know what, why am I finishing this? Yeah. I'm just gonna, I'm never gonna be able to... Why well, have a cliffhanger? Because Half-Life 2 ends on a cliffhanger enough. Yeah. I guess half everything Half-Life does, because... I know Episode 2 ends on a cliffhanger. Fuck us. Um, yeah. Episode 3, I guess they've kind of given up on I guess it's just gonna get Half-Life 3, but... I'm having a sexual awakening here. Oh, yeah. I forgot that Ulala La was this attractive. <laughs> Maybe everything I said design-wise uh, and culturally about why I like this game is complete shit. I just like to watch a pink-haired chick Maybe, run yeah. around in a spacesuit. In which case, you could just watch a No Doubt video from early 2000. That's true. Yeah. I wasn't really into... I was into Gwen Stefani, like... I went from, like, being repulsed by her... I've come full circle. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, man, I was, like, in love with her. And then... Well, she was, like, the thing. Now she's, like, 70 years old. I'm kind of, like... 70? She's, she's pretty much Sloan. Basically, yeah. yeah. She looks at Gavin Rossdale and says, I'm gonna marry him as he jumps through people's yards. That's right. Tries to make it home before his plastic surgery <laughs> wanton sister uh, goes to frame him. That's right. Is Ed Rooney... He was a pedophile, right? Did they, did they prove that? Because uh, I remember it was like a funny joke, but like there was yeah. too much going on in the news that week, so it didn't stick. I think... That was like 10 years. That was a while ago. Yeah, that was like 10 years ago. Jeffrey Jones. Jeffrey Jones. I think I think Jeff he was. Jones. Yeah. Or he got busted for... Yeah, it wasn't something. like a dangerous situation. Like, yeah. He, didn't, like, he wasn't like, caught with a kid. It was just like he had pictures on his computer or something. Um, like his nephews. Well, no, like, I mean, he definitely was a pedophile, I think. But, like, it wasn't like he, like, had a kid with him or something. I think it was just pictures on his computer. Oh, are we tag team? We're tag team with Jaguar. Nice. The, yeah. Stay away from Ooh La La, yeah, you I mean, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Alright, yeah, alright. I hate to mention it, but happening? it's worth the joke. Look at this, Gamergate. Look at this male and female working in harmony. That's right. Against a presumably male green alien 
in a pink. So, what is happening here? I don't know. You're just supposed. You're supposed to. I don't know. Channels maybe? Are these, are these channels they're broadcasting? I don't know. Oh no! It's a. I, I think it's a like a hostage versus monster situation. It's good guy, bad guy. Oh, shoot gotcha. Don't right. shoot the people. Shoot the aliens. Right. So the ratings are through the roof right now. It's almost as if we cheated. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> It's not impossible to get this. Another sad thing is that as a speedrunner, watch my Twitch channel, plug. As a speedrunner, it's really sad for me that this game is pretty much unspeedrunnable. As well as most other rhythm games. Right, like, yeah. it's... The speed is set before it begins. Oh god, they've got her. They've got her. We better send in a husky male protagonist to rescue her. This is a video game. I remember also as a kid, not, like... Because obviously I didn't really play the game, so I'd read her name in the magazines, and I was too stupid to get the pun. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I just think her name was, like, Eulala or something. I think, I it is. Like, I think it's Eulala. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay, Eulala. Hey I, there, Eulala. <laughs> when I finally caught it, it was a lot. I was like, oh, that makes too much sense. Yeah. That was a dumb kid. We've covered that a lot on Pretentious Plays, yeah. but that was a dumb child. Get out, Caesar. This is like, this is like the, uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, that. This is basically the, uh, William Falcon Escape from the Death Star. Scene. That's that that uh the last level of Super Return of the Jedi no, has that it's yeah, great it's I really like it little right. uh, shoulder button oh, yeah. spins oh god Road seven is full of that there yeah I could uh I can definitely God those games are great we need to do those yeah God those games are great those are those are fun speedrun games yeah platform oh those old side scroller platformer type games are like really fun to speedrun those run. games are hard as shit though because I'm working on Donkey Kong Country right now and it's I mean it obviously has to be like a well designed game yeah but uh. God, look at it. I like, that's my favorite move, I think. That little butt shimmy arm spin thing. Yeah. I don't know what the latest dance craze is with the kids, but they need to incorporate a little of that. Mm -hmm. They need to know their roots. Yeah. You go, girl. Look at her. Leg up. Swivel. Posing in front of her. It's worth there it is. Did you just call that the ooh la Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, do you think it's possible this is a commentary on human evolution? Absolutely. That, like, only the best dancers will live Absolutely. for future generations? Absolutely. I guess, like, if you're a good dancer, you get laid more. So I guess yeah. natural selection stands for reason. You take your biblical views on you know, creationism and <laughs> you just shove them up your ass. Because, <laughs> ooh la la. Dancing is only 200 years old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, Wait, save time. Wait, that's Overwrite the data. 100%. 100%. Good speed run too. Thirty-three. The thing, the thing is, because of the code, like the game is completely on trade. Like you have no way to know if somebody's cheating or not based on a video. Ooh, yeah. she is infiltrated. Look at that. It's like basic instinct. <laughs> Basically, I hope we get one of those scenes. <laughs> you see the the pink beaver. Oh yeah, <laughs> big time. They all, just a pink polygon right in the middle. Basic instinct, even now, is a really disturbing movie. I've seen never actually seen it. I've only watched like the like about. I've seen it like it was like off and on. Like, it was on, like, Showtime and stuff sometimes when I was, like, 15. It's, it's got, Sharon Stone is a creeper in that one. Yeah. Like, it's got some icky scenes. I have seen, I've seen, like, that scene. I've seen a couple of I'm a big Paul Verhoeven fan. Showgirls notwithstanding. Um, I don't know who that is. Oh, did he do the film? Yeah, he did, oh, like, okay, he did okay. Robocop and Starship Troopers. What um, an eclectic gentleman. And Basic Instinct, yeah, Showgirls. Yeah. Showgirls basically ruined his American career. Along, Kyle MacLachlan just made it out of that storm. He did. That yeah, was scary for him. But... God, that poor guy, he was... He Elizabeth Berkeley's still recovering from Here we go. <laughs> Saved by the bell talking. <laughs> Evil in the galaxy revealed. Yeah, I think Ulala was based, or Puddin was based on Elizabeth Berkeley. Yeah, pretty much. This is the showgirls of its time. <laughs> Just the successful version. You shut up. <laughs> you shut your mouth. <laughs> Minimum view rate. Yeah, so you need a you need a certain view rating to uh, to continue. The game won't tolerate. No, no yeah. failure allowed. Yeah. You gotta direct Ulala in the correct manner. This is like the alien boardroom. This game is great. I fucking love this game. Strong female protagonist too. This is what the game. This is what the gaming industry needs nowadays. It, it does. Like it's so get something fresh. Get like a diverse protagonist. You know what would make this game shitty? What's that? If she was a short-haired, brown-haired, white guy with stubble. Yeah. Knock it off. That's the truth. Knock it off. It's not like you need to like arbitrarily include females in your game where they don't belong, but at the same time, I'm kind of sick of looking at the same like, guy. I don't, I don't remember anybody saying when this game came out, like, oh, it's a girl game or whatever. Yeah, like, nobody, nobody does that. Yeah, like, there's a stigma that people think that, like, if a girl's the main character, only girls won't play it. It's like, that's not... How's that Tomb Raider thing going? Yeah, exactly, like... Man, that ain't just 
It's just, it's absurd. This is better than, like, any of those games. Like, I mean, the ratio of guys to girls that play this game are probably really skewed. Yeah. But in, like, a good way. Like, probably even. Yeah. But, I love it. Yeah. That's, again, it's like, the thing of it is, like, my wife is in the fashion industry. And by that, I don't mean she just likes to go shopping. I mean, like, literally, <laughs> like, she likes, it's, her actual passion is, like, fashion within culture and, you know, trends and things like that. So, being that gaming is my primary hobby or so, despite how compatible we are functionally, our two biggest passions have no overlap, except for literally this game. Yeah. Like, because this game is very, like, fashionably, fashion-minded, like it carries a lot of those principles and things, and wish more games did. Mm -hmm. So you're Space Michael. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's... It's Wacko. The moment you've all been waiting for. It's Jacko. Jacko Wacko. Standing up here, I can hear them. Yeah. It's clapping from here, yeah. It's like when uh, Kevin Spacey enters Seven in the oh, third yeah, act absolutely. of the <laughs> Yeah. He didn't know he was Spoiler. Coming. Here he is. <laughs> he's almost 20 years old. Yeah, it is. Horrifying. Yeah. Are we plateauing on film? As far as, like... The CGI is kind of shitty. Yeah. Like, I feel like all the technological advancements between, like, say, 1975 and 1995 are very good. Yeah. Between 1995 till now, man, it's pretty I mean, much like, just the same thing. I thought Avatar was going to be the next step. I mean, the movie wasn't great, but, like, technologically it was. But, like, oh, gee, I wonder if James Cameron did that film. Yeah, well, imagine that. Um, <laughs> technologically like, Paragon, written by an eighth grader. Yeah, pretty much. Um... God damn it, James Cameron. Let somebody else write it, you egomaniac. Yeah, you can't write it. Lies is an excellent movie. Yeah, but it's still not. Like, like Titanic is an extraordinary visual movie, and the story's great and all that stuff. Yeah. The dialogue and the writing is uh, awful. Yeah. It's awful. And the dialogue is only so great in True Lies because you have a lot of doing it. Yes. Like, he can pull off anything. JLC. Yeah. Selling yogurt. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm talking about pooping habits. <laughs> I think that at least Jamie Lee Curtis has embraced her, her age group. Yeah, it's true. She's yeah. like, I wear the pins. It's a right. fucking deal. Yeah. So you remember me from trading places? Well, now I have Google Freaky Power. Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's been a lot of swap movies. Oh, yeah. She really has. I yeah. Thought about that. I mean, <laughs> movies. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> experiments. It's all relative. Who was the. Was that Lindsay Lohan in Freaky Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's done a lot of Freaky Friday since then. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah. buddy. Thank you. Uh, a night at the improv oh, yeah. posted by Jay. I'm trying to get a job right for Jay Leno. Keyboard girl. Hey, I think that predates. Uh... No, I guess that girl, girl thing Ryan came about. Girl, yeah, yeah, right. Girl. Bikini kill. Yeah, oh yeah. I tell you. Was uh, Sushi and the Banshees the right girl? No, it was just Sushi. Okay. Yeah. The most impossible to name, to spell name ever. Yeah. Sushi and the Banshees. Oh, they were great. They were okay. I liked them all right. Yeah. I got into them very late. Like, I didn't discover them until, like, 02, 01. Yeah, that was kind of I didn't stay favorite. for long. It was just like, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, they're, they're all right. I'll tell you who I've been really into over the last, like, five or six years, and I, and I don't listen to anything, is uh, Slater Kenny. Yeah, they're I'm, good. Yeah, I bought into Slater Kenny. I just started listening to them recently. recently. Yeah. Um, I really like the One Beat album. Yeah. The One Beat's great. The Woods is really good, too. It's one of the more recent ones. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they've got a tune on one. Which, you know what y'all, it's not on One Beat. I'm sure it's on one of the other ones. They got a tune called The Swimmer. I don't remember. And I think it's based on my actually on the John I would assume it's based on the John Cheever short story, which is my second favorite short story behind of course. Yeah, pop quiz for any of our yeah. viewers. Spoiler alert. It may or may not have something to do with my Twitch handle. <laughs> there you go. People always think it's the magic card, because everybody knows me through magic. Because yeah, there's a magic card. Which called, makes sense. Yeah, because there's a magic card called Scribner, but yeah. Big fan of the big fan of Melville. But anyway, English major boom. Yeah, you getting there. Yeah. Look at the fat little one in the middle. Doing like a Three Stooges thing. I keep waiting for one of them to get on that pole, yeah. showgirl style. Who was the other girl in that movie? G Gina Gershon. Yeah. And her career didn't really survive that either. Although I don't know if really had a start to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Was, I mean, I've heard of her. And I, you know. Until yesterday, I never heard of him stone. Until I watched, uh... You've been missing out, my friend. <laughs> so they tell me. Yeah. I watched, uh... You ever saw Crazy Stupid Blog? No. Oh, that was a great movie. You liked it a lot. Really? Yeah, it's a romantic comedy, but not like an annoying one. It's got, like, Steve Carell. It's got Hart. Yep. Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, and Stone. Yeah, it sounds like Hart. <laughs> it's 
great. I like a bunch of nonsense. Like, it's funny, but it's also got, like, some good info to My it. favorite thing about you is that you, like, you're an artistically minded person. I mean, you're on a pretentious place. Yeah, that's it. But you still, like, have an unabashed like for things that are just outside the category. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm much more, like, discerning. Like, I just, I don't know. Maybe it's just because, like, I'm older and I'm like, I'm gonna die someday. I don't have two hours to watch this crap. Right. But, like... <laughs> At the same time, I like that you you stride the line. Yeah, yeah, I got to. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> That's find who I am. Yeah, you gotta adapt. <laughs> also, that was one of those. You're like an evolved man. That's one of those situations where it was like a really <gasps> fortunate. Nice. Evil. Oh, so this is like the Dark Link situation. Oh. Yeah. You no, know, Crazy Stupid Love was one of those instances where it's like a really lucky date situation because this was years and years ago. It was one of my ex-girlfriends. We went. She wanted to see it. And she loves Steve Carell. And I was like, all right, whatever, I'll go see it. I like it was done enough. And like, I really liked the movie, but I never would have watched it on my own. So it was like this really fortunate situation where I got to see this movie that I really enjoyed because of somebody else's reason. Okay, yeah. And, you know, I don't know what the hell happened to her, but <laughs> the movie's great. <laughs> she went on to become Pudding. Yeah. For, she probably did. Channel 42. <laughs> she probably was better Pudding in one, one way. I wonder if, uh... <laughs> I wonder if Pudding got her name after be it was her stripper name, Maybe. because her. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie. This is gonna be a Bill Cosby sexual assault joke, oh, okay, but sorry. yeah, but I can't get through it enough. So you can tie it all together yeah. yourself. We're gonna feel really bad if like that comes out to be false, and you know, here we are implicating Bill Cosby. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not. I mean, I'm into in the America. Whole, like, you know, I'm into believing it's true, just because like, why not? I just don't. It's almost kind of fun to believe the Bill Cosby. Well, not fun, but like. I just don't care. Yeah. And I don't mean I don't care in the sense that it's like, if it did happen, yeah, those poor women, but it's like. So, like, there's like. We have like the most horribly lopsided perspective when it comes to things like this because it's a huge deal. Literally every second this story has developed something else, 15 other people, you know, like women in India are being set on fire. Like, yeah. I just like. Like, I don't care any more than I do about all the things going on that I don't hear about. Like, right. it's, it's fucking horrible, but it's yeah. like... Well, my thing of people who are defending Bill Cosby, it's almost like, you know, why? Like, why... Blind defense, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, why, right. like, in a situation where he could either be, like, this awful human being, or where these women are lying, why would you pick his side? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you're just intentionally... You have no, yeah. you have no connection to him other than he entertained you 25 years ago. Yeah. Like, you don't have any personal connection to him, so why would you want to defend him as opposed to people who might have been victimized? Human like, denial knows no bounds. It's like the, it's like the global warming thing. I don't mean to get too political, but it's like, a large section of very, very unbelievably foolish human beings Despite being, you know, mature in the adult sense, despite being 40, 50, 35 years old or whatever, and to have all the knowledge of the world that that entails, still can't get past the fear of death insofar as to accept that something that may not be good may actually be happening regardless of their perspective. Yeah, exactly. and that's unbelievable to me. It does, it does a lot of damage. It's yeah. Human personal fable, the idea that your life is your story and that everybody else is in your story. That's not actually how it works. People Listen. die every day unexpectedly and yeah. the world moves on. Yeah, you're, not, exactly. you're not very important, so. I think people also have this fear, because the thing happened with Michael Jackson, like, they have this fear of like, well, if it did happen, then they can't enjoy their work anymore. And it's almost like, yeah. so they deny it for that. Like, if Bill Cosby raped all these women, I can't watch the Cosby show anymore and enjoy it. It's like, well, that's not really true. Because, yeah, that doesn't affect anything. Like, if you're slightly intelligent, it's going to be the same show and it's not going to affect you at all because you can separate the two. Yeah. Um, like, you know what I mean? Like, you're not laughing at him because of his moral stance. You're laughing because... It's funny, yeah. yeah like, like, you would enjoy it something. Yeah. Yeah, like, but people are so concerned about being entertained if they're like, oh, he didn't do it. I love the copy. Yeah. Show. I, I'd like to implement my view. Yeah. My completely, like, irrelevant view on the world. Yeah. I hate when people use their own, like, worldview as if that's, like... I can think, regardless of age, I can think of no sort of greater adult immaturity than, like, the notion that because you... something is more convenient for you that that's suddenly the truth as you see. Like, yeah. get the hell out of here. Yeah. Spoiler alert. You don't actually matter. Yeah. But Ula La does. Ula La La just got wrecked. She did. Wrecked. So. She's not I'm, on, I'm on pins and needles here. She did? 
I think she's dead. She's quite dead. There was a Space Channel 5 too, if I'm not I was going to ask, was there a sequel? I think so. Oh, look, he rescues her. Let's See, that's a parallel between the intro scene with the little girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very good. I don't know why that means anything, but... <laughs> Only the love of Jaguar, who interestingly, I think, was certifi is certifiably gay, because he was doing... Like, there's... I'm not saying that everybody that every male that can dance well is gay, that's obviously not true. But I, it's, some of the scenes in this, I think we need to make yeah. the concession that... Based on overwhelming evidence that uh, Reporter Jaguar is, in fact, uh, into the dudes. Yeah. So, there was a sequel. It didn't come out until 2003 in America. Oh, three? Okay. So, like, I guess this was almost, like, reported because of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it came out in Japan a year beforehand. It was kind of way bad. It's actually on the PSN. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Download, yeah. So. Well, look for that next time. Yeah, for real. And we can enter a cheat code where we don't have to play it like this. Apparently, Space Michael reprises his role. Space Michael? Yeah. As the molestation boss? Yeah. <laughs> Watch out, Ulala. This is brutal. It's also impressive that this game was a success at all in America, like... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's Sega. They yeah. just, like, ignored... See, this is about togetherness. You yeah. see how people unite? Absolutely. Puddin and Jaguar, once rivals of Ulala. See, this is what we really need. We need CNN mm -hmm. and Fox News and... MSNBC to unite against the common threat. God, this is getting more pertinent now than ever. Obama and Kim Jong Il. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I saw an Obama sticker that had the O in Ebola. Like, what does that mean? No, it was at the grocery store. It's like, yeah, I just wanted to like, if I like, I just wanted to like wait at the car and be like, what is like, why? What does yeah. this actually? That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, well, I had a, a brother-in-law over Thanksgiving said that he was an illegal immigrant. And I was just like, wow, we're still on that train. Yeah. Like, they'll, ride it, they'll ride it. They'll ride it up out of nowhere, too. Yeah. I was just like, he's like, yeah, well, he's an illegal immigrant. And I'm like, well, I don't know if that's true, because yeah. I'm pretty sure, you know, people who fact check that sort of thing for the presidency are smarter than you in the landscaping position. But, you know. <laughs> Why don't you go mow along? Yeah. Far be it for me to yeah. kind of we're, uh, we're doing this during the, uh, just after the week of the, uh, what's the guy's name? Eric? Is it Gardner? Gardner? Gar Gardner. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of hoopla, like, the, the most hilarious thing is the connections just these absolute cave people are making between Eric Garner and Barack Obama, and there's yeah. really only one link between those two people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, like, blaming, like, uh, it's like, well, it wouldn't happen if their culture would get themselves under control, yeah. and the leader in the White House ain't helping. It's like, there's literally no connection between those two people except skin color. You oh, are yeah. a confessional asshole. Oh, I had a friend on Facebook, she frequently posts things about Mossy Oak and, uh, you know, how Obama's going to take her guns away and stuff, as if he's going to come to their house. Yeah, and, like, knock, knock. <laughs> and whenever the Ferguson riots were happening, she said, like, please pray, pray for the police officers in Ferguson and, you know, pray for, uh, so they can get these animals to stop rioting or something like yeah. that effect. And I was like, wow. My favorite is where, like, Thug has just become, like, the new N-word substitute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can get away with, like, number of times I've ever heard a white person called a thug zero. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fuck you, America. See, yeah. this is why America blows. But fortunately, in the future, Ooh La La rescues us from the tapioca space alien. Absolutely. All right, this game's over. We're, yeah. we're getting too political. Yeah. We just need to enjoy Puddin'. Just dancing Puddin's off in the sunset yeah. on Rainbow Roll, Road. roll creds. So, uh, any... any Apollo's Apollo smile. smile. How about that? that is, there's that's no way name. that's a real name. Any parting thoughts on uh, Space Channel 5? So, Michael Jackson, that's really fun. I'm guessing it wasn't actually him. Yeah, this is libel. <laughs> yeah. It's a misappropriation. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't lie to me. I take every good thing I've ever said about this. Although, not really. he I did like have it. a connection with Sega, though. Because he did do the first draft of the music for Sonic 3. It was just so he could get closer to kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, probably. He probably thought it was a little I love that now that he's dead and it's so far, like, we're over 20 years past that whole scandal, that, like, now it just makes no difference. So you may as well just make jokes about it. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, who cares? Yeah. It's all in good fun. He made his money. Yeah. He had a he had a good life. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> nah, not so much. Bubbles did. The monkey. Oh yeah, they all did. Emmanuel Lewis had a good life. <laughs> Jennifer Garner, or is that her name? Jennifer. Jennifer Garner. What? Gray. Gray. Yeah. Garner's Affleck's chick. Yeah, she's a big forehead. From Juno. Yeah. See, I'm attracted to her. I think she's more attractive. I used to be, but I'm just kind of over it now. She was good in Dallas Buyers Club. Still haven't seen that. See it's it. great. It's great. All right, let's put it. Let's put this out of its misery before we have to talk about the rednecks in our oh, yeah. immediate vicinity and their Ebola racism. 
So uh, this has been Space Channel 5 on Pretentious Place. We'll see you again soon for yeah. J Derm. Bye. I am ye oldie Scrivener. Why does everybody have Pigeon as their I think nickname? it's the same guy. Are you sure? I'm almost positive. All right. You'll have to rewind the video to see, but... I want to know. I think Kenichi Suzuki was an Earthbound guy. Hmm. Interesting. This is good that we're getting in some Japanese racism at the end of this, because oh, yeah. I think what we're doing is just seeing the same name because we just assume that all Japanese names look alike. Maybe. Could be possible. Anyway. Bye. Bye. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. <laughs>